has hit Chicago, so it's a great time to move to prime time in the National Women's Soccer League. U.S. players Julie Ertz and Alyssa Nair are back, and so are we. Two of the league's top goal scorers face off as league leader Christine Sinclair looks to get the Portland Thorns back on championship pace. Head it in, Christine Sinclair! But Sam Kerr has found the form that won her the 2017 MVP and is determined to launch the Chicago Red Stars up the crowded middle of the table. It's the NWSL on ESPN. The Chicago Red Stars versus the Portland Thorns, live. Time when the eyes of the world are on soccer, we're going to keep it rolling right here from Toyota Park as we welcome you to the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime, the first of six of our Game of the Week matches that have been moved to primetime in our ESPN family of networks. Great matchup for you tonight as the Chicago Red Stars host the defending NWSL champion, Portland Thorns. Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Hildreth. And while we want to get to the game here shortly, first we have some news to tell you about. Breaking just before we came on air, the Chicago Red Stars released the news that three players will not be dressed for tonight's game because they are part of a pending trade. And this includes some core players of this Red Stars franchise. Sofia Huerta, U.S. national team member. Sam Johnson, who's been a rock in the back. Taylor Camo, Lauren Kasky announced that she was also released. So we know a trade is coming and has not been approved officially yet by the league. But this opens the door for U.S. national team players Kristen Press and Morgan Bryan to make their way back to the league. And I welcome another former U.S. national team player now, Kate Markgraf, into the broadcast. Get a little bit of drama to talk about right off the bat, Kate. Well, thank you for welcoming me <laughs> to this broadcast with under such great, interesting news off the field. But what I love best about this is now we're going to get two of the best players in the world playing on a regular basis in the NWSL. The two U.S. internationals will get 90 minutes. We're guessing going to be starters for their teams, and they're going to make impacts, which makes them better selections come World Cup qualifying and makes it easier for them to get on Jill Ellis's radar. Now, we don't know exactly where all the pieces are going to wind up. We do know three teams involved Chicago, Houston, and Utah. So plenty to keep an eye on there as that news continues. But for now, this Chicago team, Kate, has got to figure out a way to beat a Portland team that has had their number since 2013. The Red Stars winless against the Thorns. They're going to look to their veterans like U.S. national team midfielder Julie Ertz, and she is standing by with our own Dallin Cuff. Thanks, Jed. Now, Julie, they just talked about we've got some roster shakeup going on this season. You guys have a ton of injuries. You're just getting back healthy. How do you get your team as the captain here set to face the defending champs in a huge game in the standings? Yeah, I think to have a lot of adversity in the beginning of the year, obviously with a ton of injuries, a lot of players just have had to step up. I think that's kind of the culture that was created in practice, um, and I think that's kind of like the mentality, and that's on the players as well, just to be focused. So I think, you know, collectively we had a meeting kind of to, to know what we need to do tonight and really kind of focus and play together, and I think that's the key is, is to collectively do, you know, what's asked um, together. That's the big thing tonight. Thanks. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. All right, we come back. Jen and Kate will take a look at tonight's starting lineups, and we'll have the opening kick. You're watching the NWSL and ESPN presented by Lifetime. Laura, you found my secret. Our world is in danger. You must stop them. It'll be an adventure. Some men like dangerous women. You can't be too careful these days. I'll take two. So lose a lot. Thy armor was forged by a feeble fingered peasant woman. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom! As long as hecklers love to heckle, you can count on Geico save folks money. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Hey, Papa Bear, it's Megan. Just wanted to give you a very big shout out on Father's Day. I love you so much. Thank you for all you do and all the other dads out there. You guys rock. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Some of my best sporting memories are with you. 
Happy Father's Day, Dad. You are incredible and you're my idol, everything I look up to. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thanks for being such an amazing role model to me and my brothers. Happy Dad's Day to all the dads out there. Hope you all enjoy the game. And we wish you all a very happy Father's Day weekend as we welcome you to our very first presentation of our NWSL on ESPN presented by Lifetime. That's our game of the week this week. Some changes in the Chicago Red Stars starting lineup. Kate, we see Julie Ertz moving into the back and then a late scratch. Rosie White being replaced by Michelle Vasconcelos on top. This team has been racked with injuries. We're going to see Julie Ertz back in the center. They're looking for her to solidify that defense that has given up 16 goals this season. Portland, we'll see what they can do to test them. They will be without Tobin Heath and Mitch Purse. Both of those players coming back injured after going in with the U.S. national team. But here's how the Thorns and the leading scorer this league in this year in the league, Christine Sinclair, line up. Well, the strength of the Thorns is in that midfield with three internationals with Haran Sinclair and Andresina. How are they going to click? And when they click, can they get that front line going? You'll see Weber shooting up, Speedy Carpenter shooting up, and Serna Gosevich trying to find her footing. To the yellow card on Lindsay Haran. One more for her, and she will serve a one-game suspension. Danielle Chesky, our referee for tonight's match. She was in the center during the 2017 NWSL Championship that saw this Portland Thorns team win it all against the North Carolina Courage. This is going on well, not too far from here, really. They're brave. I'm glad I'm here and not there. It's a hot night <laughs> just outside Chicago. A heat wave coming through. This is as hot as it has been here all season long and for someone who's going to be right out there in it let's go down to the field and down cuff jen you know i'm the first one to complain about the heat and that's <laughs> never going to stop but i will tell you this it is all the field has become totally shaded in the last 45 minutes and it is a night and day difference to when we were in the sun just at less than an hour ago so that will help these ladies no doubt be, to, be able to endure some heat but it's not nearly as bad as it was when the sun was up that is one of the great benefits of pushing kickoff back Getting a primetime kick here for you for this matchup. These two teams tied in the standings. 15 points apiece. Portland with the slight edge after their win over the Red Stars here at Toyota Park in week two of the season. And we'll wish a good day, mate, to all of you. It is Aussie night here, in case you didn't know, at Toyota Park. A couple of Aussies on both these teams, including reigning MVP Sam Kerr, right at the top of the attack for Chicago. And Ellie Carpenter's in the starting lineup. 18-year-old. And this is a chance early for Kerr. Sam Kerr lets it loose, just missing the corner. One thing the Red Stars want to do is come out strong and win the physical matchups. That's Julie Ertz making an impact, winning that head ball. Ends up splitting the back line of the Thorns and Sankar not able to get her hips around it. Eckerstrom do, do for it, but look at that touch. It doesn't matter. She's able to move the ball with such speed. The ball never slows her down. And that is what makes her so dangerous because she's incredibly quick. This Portland Thorns team has had some difficulty at times this season in giving up goals as Vasconcelos gets around the corner, gets the cross through, and a missed touch there will give an early corner kick to the Red Stars. Vasconcelos out of CND, Utah, played collegially at BYU. This is her first season in the NWSL after missing all of last season due to pregnancy, getting the start, as we said, due to the late scratch to Rosie White. Danielle Colaprico set to take the corner. Driven ball. Kerr was up in the air for it. Comes down. Mott took the shot. Gilliland from distance, but too high. Aaron Gilliland, one of those players you talked about, Kate, who will get up and down into the attack. In fact, she did play the attack for some of the games this it's true. season. A forward in college from Kentucky used to call our collegiate games an impact maker. Drafted by the Red Stars, basically playing right back most of the time with Casey Short playing left, has been shuffled this entire season to different positions almost every game in order to fill the holes due to injuries to other players. Casey Short, Vanessa DiBernardo, two mainstays for the Chicago team, yet to play this season, though they are available. Would expect to see them. Here's Anna Surnagorcevic. Touch got away from her there, though. 
as the Swiss International unable to catch up to the ball. For Rory Dames and the Chicago Red Stars team, you know, okay, they come into this one with a bit of a chip on the shoulder. They've had great success. Rory's taken this team to the playoffs, the semifinals in this league the last three years. But one team they just cannot figure out is Portland. Haven't won against them since 2013. It's a 12-match winless streak against the Thorns. Yuki Nagasato, number 12, has it taken away by Lindsey Horan. So influential wherever she is on the field for Portland or the USA, as she just was in those two friendlies against China. Here's Megan Klingenberg. Back to Emily Mengis. Mentioned some issues for this Thorns defense. They have had a number of players out as well. Talked about the players missing for Chicago. Well, the Portland defense has not been able to have a lot of consistency. Mengus glances over her shoulder to see just exactly where last year's Golden Boo winner was. Sarah Gordon, number 14, in Dakota Prico. Klingenberg. And one thing that Rory Dame said to us about this Portland team and about what Mark Parsons has done for them is he said they just, they know how to win. And they are the defending NWSL champs. He said this season, you know, it hasn't always been pretty, even last season, but they find a way, they have the will, they have the skill to get it done. Vasconcelos working on Klingenberg. Gets the ball through. Kerr just a couple of inches away. Portland under some duress early. Kelly Hubley who got the start at that right back position with Midge Purse being injured. Purse got called into the U.S. national team. What bad luck, Kate gets hurt in training. Ankle injury. This ball, a very awkward moment for the Portland defense. And that's what you get for that inconsistent line. Especially Emily Sonnet is back there. She's so good at holding the ball, very, very vocal, able to clear balls out of pressure. People get out of her way. And with the constant shuffling of the lineup that the Thorns have had to do due to injuries, you're going to see miscues like that, that thankfully didn't punish them, but does give Chicago another opportunity. Second corner kick of the match. Colaprico again to take it. This one swinging in toward the goal. Near post header. Now down on the ground. Vasconcelos gets to it. Big collision just outside the area as Andresinha, who just came back from a camp with Brazil in that FIFA international break, is slowly back up to her feet. This is Mots going into Andresinha, just catches her on the follow through. Mots originally did, was kind of complaining to the referee. Sorry, it was Nikki Stan complaining to the referee a little bit, like, I didn't touch her. On replay, you could definitely see she did. Well, there you see Mark Parsons. Out over that 50 win mark in the NWSL. And what a job he's done since coming to Portland. This is his third season, won the championship last year. The Thorns were the shield winners in the regular season two years ago. And this year he admitted to us, Kate, it's been a more rocky road, very up and down as they have had players in and out, as most teams have had to deal with that to some extent or another. Mott's trying to get it to Kerr. Let's go down to Dallin. Just talking to Mark Parsons before the game, obviously with Chicago going through all these changes, he came out and said, Pretty concerned that whenever you go through this type of adversity, this type of turmoil, the Chicago team's going to come out flying. And as we've seen, the ball's hardly crossed into their half of the field. They've been, Portland's been under pressure this whole time. So right now they are trying to handle what he was worried about pregame. It has played out that way so far, Dallin, for sure. Chicago's been on the front foot. Sarah Gordon will pass it back to U.S. goalkeeper Alyssa Nair. And 
as we wait to see what this impending trade that we got wind of just a couple of hours before airtime, what that brings. In the short term, what we know is Chicago is down three players, two starters, one in Taylor Camo, who's appeared in every match, the other two, Sofia Huerta and Sam Johnson, extremely important. Turnover here, gets it to Nagasato. Kerr onto it, took a bit of a deflection, and that may have helped out Britt Eckerstrom. Get to see that connection build up between Nagasato and Kerr. What I love is that one touch pass by Nagasato, and she hits Kerr on the front foot, so Kerr doesn't have to turn her back to it. And she gets it on her right preferred foot, but enough of a deflection, it goes right to Eckerstrom. But that was all about Nagasato. So many players will take that second touch because they have that time in that space. So it was that decision to hit a one-time ball, but more importantly, leading her with it so she didn't have to stop her momentum. We saw Nagasato and Kerr connect as Chicago again charging into Portland territory. And this is going to put a lot of pressure on Britt Eckerstrom, who, remember, is the backup goalkeeper for Portland, AD French still out, although Dallin and I talked to her yesterday. She is so close, so ready to being able to be back, has hopes to be back with her team on the field, perhaps by their next match, which is at Houston. You can see she's right in the middle of the screen there, looking on. And Brick Ek Eckerstrom has been the one tasked with filling her sizable shoes. French, the reigning NWSL goalkeeper of the year. And Nagasato Kerr connection looking to work up again, but the flag will snuff that one out. There's a little smile from AD. <laughs> she knows we're talking about her. And what a great experience it's been for Ekstrom to get some much needed game time. There's nothing that can replicate the speed of play and the types of crosses and the pressure from the runs that are trying to get onto that cross. You can't learn that in college. And that has been a big area of growth from her from the start, which she started seeing more minutes to now. Julie Ertz in that center back position, so good in the air, wins that ball for Chicago. Sinclair with a rare touch, now Horan. Horan looking for the Canadian International again. Sinclair slid to try to get to it. Mott's finally a clearing ball to release some of that pressure. Katie Naughton. Stanton had her space closed down rather quickly by Mallory Weber. Ertz looking for the long ball. And it might just pay off for the Chicago team, not that time. Well, a bit of end to end action. This one, Sinclair, again, one time transition ball. Her ran. Keep Picks her head up and buys enough time for Sinclair to continue the run. That back line of Chicago is in bits and pieces as you have the right back Gordon having to then cover Central versus Sinclair. It's all because the quickness of moving of the ball and the movement off the ball. Four shots for the Red Stars in this match. None yet for the Thorns who've barely had a sniff of possession. Nagasato, you get the feeling, Kate. She lifts her head. She's thinking, where's number 20? You can hardly blame her. Gilliland will be the recipient, or would have been, of that ball. Dallin mentioned it earlier. Plenty of other games in action. No score between Washington and Seattle. Final of these on go 90. The league leaders in North Carolina and Utah scoreless in the second half. Good as North Carolina been, and a good one going on between Orlando and Sky Blue FC. Still looking for their first win of the season. Sydney LaRue with a brace for Orlando, but that Sky Blue FC team, you know they have got to be desperate to try to get those three points. Anna 
Serna Gorchevich. Was busy over the break, one match with Switzerland. Now to Klingenberg. Hubley is trying to work it through Haran. That pass taken away from Mengus, and it, it, it seems that Dallin just pointed this out, sent me a message from the sidelines, Kate, that Chicago looking pretty direct here in these first opening minutes of the match. I think there's huge pockets of space in that midfield that's finding Nagasato, and she is looking to then hit the next pocket where Sam Kerr is running into. When you watch those two players, they never stop moving. Sora Gorjevic trying to link up. Get something going in that Portland attack. Andresinha. Here is Ellie Carpenter, an 18 year old Australian. Reynolds a service. Falls to Weber. She's looking for Sinclair. Colaprico laid out to try to keep that ball off the foot of Sinclair, but now it's with Haran. Haran standing tall on the ball. Carpenter, the shot, a big save! Portland not done yet. Their best flurry of activity of this match so far. One of Chicago's biggest weaknesses is their man marking in the box when the initial pressure breaks down. Haran able to dink the ball because Gillian comes jumping in. Weber puts it back to Serena Gosevich, but she's off balance on that six. But watch this. Naughton tries to come in. There's no reason why Gillian is up there. Nair does a great job on that initial save. But then again, no one's now marking, marking Serena Gosevich. Once it's inside the box, you stay with your player. And you stay touch tight. Carpenter again on the ball for Portland. Looking to cross it to Weber. She's been hanging out over there. Mallory Weber found some space. Haran lost it. Nagasato wasting no time and trying to set up Sam Kerr. And the Aussie makes some magic on Aussie Knight. Menges says, uh uh, not this time. Sarah Gordon played some important minutes for Chicago this season with the players they have out. Sona Gorchevich knew she'd need some help. Score was 3 2 the last time these two teams met here at Toyota Park, week two of the season, with Portland coming out victorious in that one. And Chicago coming away feeling like they, they maybe made it a little too easy on the Thorns. A couple of goals off set pieces, including one a penalty kick. Christine Sinclair had two goals in that match for the Thorns. And just man marking. Yeah. Off a reservice. Something they talked about. They just need a little bit, get a little bit tighter. But it comes down to communication, and a lot of that communication right now that I hear is coming from Nair. But when she has to focus in when someone's in shooting range, that's when Julie Ertz will now start to step up like she used to when she played in that center back position before they moved her to defensive mid in the middle of last season. But that's a transition again. This is the first time we're seeing Ertz in the center of the back line. Klingenberg serving the ball just outside the area. She'll find Hubley. Haran. Offside flag up against the Thorns. Watch Portland trying to test this center back pairing of Naughton and Ertz. Sitting in between the pockets, offside there for Haran and Serena Stogosevic. But you get to see how both Julie Ertz and Katie Naughton are going to have to have their head on a swivel as those two are playing on the restraining line. And you wonder, Kate, how much time Julie Ertz had to train at this position. I mean, probably not much. She was with <laughs> the U.S., right? Played on Tuesday, came back. And then the trade, we all got wind of it just before really coming to Toyota Park earlier this afternoon. 
I think the only difference it makes for a person who's used to playing in the spine of a team is just your angles of support. Because when you're in the center of the field, in the midfield, you're going 360. You're, uh, your head's on a swivel. You can pass it multiple directions. When you're in the back, you don't have as much liberty. Kerr showing that Australian rules football background as she just bullied her way onto the ball, took the shot, not on target. Well, Sam Kerr realizing that no one's really stepping up to pressure her, but she also doesn't have as many dangerous options up front. So she decides to test Portland there a little bit. Hubley steps a little bit late, but watch the strength of Sam Kerr. This is someone that is always moving, but now is using her body to shield others in order to gain the advantage, and there just misses the mark. Dallin has a great feature for you at halftime on, on Kerr's background and her playing of the footy, as she would say. Rough and tumble kid, played Australian rules football long before she ever thought about playing soccer. Take away by Gordon. Gonna ask Mott to make a run for this one. Mott had two goals for Chicago against the Thorns in their first meeting this season, a losing effort. Gilland sends it across. Cernogorcevic came back to win it in the air for Portland. Weber wanted to turn around Gordon. No such luck. Cola Prico saying, go get it, Kerr. We'll see what Chicago does on this throw, but this is really a very different approach. They have been very direct, as we were just talking about, from when we've seen them earlier this season, where Dames has talked about their move to a more possession-oriented game, a build, a different shape on the field. But they're also missing two players that are able to keep possession and provide different angles. And Huerta and Rosie White was scratched at the last minute. So those are two players that are comfortable with the ball on the ground and keeping it a little bit before they attack. So glad to have you all with us as our crew moved over here to the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime. Jen Hildreth, Dallin Cuff, two-time Olympic gold medalist Kate Markgraf joining us up in the broadcast booth. So happy to have you here with us, Kate. It's good to be here. Nice, hot, steamy day in Chicago. <laughs> Hottest they've had so far, this little stretch we're in, this heat wave. You're welcome. The big news of the day that we've alluded to throughout the broadcast, three Chicago players not in the lineup, not dressed for today because they are part of a pending trade that has not yet been approved. Sofia Huerta, Taylor Camo, Sam Johnson, those three. We know it is a three-team trade. Chicago, Utah, Houston, the three teams. Kristen Press, Morgan Bryan, two names you may also hear coming back into the NWSL once this thing is all through. Chicago holding the rights to Morgan Bryan and Houston currently with the NWSL rights for press. Gordon, who's played both center back and outside back, gets it up to Kerr. Kerr has seen a lot of the ball in these first 20 minutes and change. Mott has it taken right off her foot by Hubley. Well done by Kelly Hubley, the former national team replacement player who earned a spot on this Portland squad. This is her 11th appearance of the season. And what you may notice, see Casey Short, Vanessa DiBernardo, but uh, some empty seats on that Chicago bench as they had those three players we mentioned not dressed, who we expect to see traded. And then Lauren Kasky was waived. And Rosie White, a late scratch. She was out in warm-ups and was injured, had to be taken out of the lineup. So some adversity for this Red Stars team, or at least some turmoil. We'll see how they handle it. So far, so good.
Alyssa Motts. Back out to Kerr. She's going to touch it back inside. Zahn opening for Motts, perhaps before Motts herself did. If you're Portland, Kate, what do they need to do to, to get into this game a bit more? Well, I think they're just waiting to grow into the game a little bit. As we talked about with all the trades going on and all the uncertainty, that meant it might have been a rally point for this Red Star team that came out flying. I'll get back to that in a second. Carpenter has done her fair share of flying down that far sideline for Portland. But the thing is, is they may come out flying, but it's just a matter of time, right? All these missed chances. You're seeing Sam Kerr and Nagasato do an incredible amount of running to get onto the ball. They are by far the two highest quality players in the middle of the park currently at this moment. When is it going to pay off? Or when are they going to get tired? So that's going to be interesting to watch as this game goes on. But their movement off the ball right now is incredible. And half the time, there's not being seen. Conversely, for the Thorns, when is Andresina going to get on the ball? She's trying to figure out her connection with Sinclair and Haran in there. Sometimes those three are flat in the middle, which means they don't have the best supporting angles. And sometimes Sinclair's on that front line or Haran. So that's the fun part of this. With so much quality, how are all those pieces going to fit together to put, to put together a winning recipe? And Portland, I think most would agree, plays differently when they don't have Tobin Heath. And she was ruled out for this match. <laughs> I think everyone would play differently without. I mean, who else in America, an American player, has that kind of creative genius and then the technical skill to execute what they're thinking? Do you think Rose Lavelle is in that same type of mold? I mean, maybe not there yet, but maybe. I think Rose Lavelle may be a little bit more explosive side to side, but the technical little bits and flair that you don't need movement to create. I think Tobin has that. Lavelle playing for the Washington Spirit. Great to see her getting back healthy. So Klingenberg will take this free kick. Serna Gorshevich will round it up. Weber tried to go right back into the fray, blocked by Vasconcelos. Here's Andresina. Klingenberg all the way over on the other side now after taking that free kick. Sinclair hunting for the ball. Hurts intercepted. Kerr, a little more wide this time, and Chicago will switch it to the near side for Vasconcelos, but out of bounds. Emily Mangus, team MVP a couple of years ago for this Portland team. Missed the first seven matches of the season. One of the reasons this defense has maybe not quite gelled as well as it has the last couple of years when Portland was the best in the league defensively in terms of goals against. French also being out, you mentioned Emily Sonnet out with that lower back pain at the moment. I think she's key to that team besides Heath, but her in the back line, makes everyone much more calm and makes everyone confident moving forward. But when this team gets all their pieces together for more than a game or two, it's going to be incredible. Nagasato winning that one-on-one -on -one battle with Haran, but it's her in a sea of Portland red jerseys at the moment. Kerr to the rescue. Vasconcelos. Nagasato, the NWSL Player of the Week. Pretty easy save that time for Ecker Strong. Next Saturday, June 23rd, the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime, returns once again in prime time on ESPN News as the Washington Spirit, led by Rose Lavelle, hosts U.S. National Team superstar Alex Morgan and the Orlando Pride. Coverage for that one beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live on ESPN News. Free kick coming as Horan hits the deck. Serna Gorshevich is offside.
Turn to Gorsevich, which is a little bit too early on her run. Chicago doing a great job staying disciplined. I imagine in the second half, the Thorns are going to take set pieces a bit more, with a bit more variety, with a little bit more movement before hitting that ball, coming from a deeper position. So they can run on that ball in behind the space with a little bit of speed. Pulling that high off sideline works maybe once or twice, but the smart teams and the smart players adapt and have a decoy run. Ertz miss hits that one out of bounds. That's Morgan Bryan making her way back to Chicago. Not official yet, but they do retain her rights. She had a rough stretch in France, but is negotiating right now with the U.S. Federation to get back into the league, and she would be here in Chicago. I saw her before uh, the game. She had a hard workout, so she feels really good. Looking forward to, to getting back out there on the field. And talking to Rory Dames earlier this week, he said, you know, priority for her is getting her back fully fit, having a conversation with her and a conversation with Jill Ellis as far as how they can get her to a point where she can be playing a peak form and get on that roster for the U.S. Women's National Team World Cup qualifying, which comes up in October. They'll have all that conversation and then how she fits into this team coming up here in the next few days. Well, that's going to be key to see how she adapts back to a transition league. This is a pretty high-paced league end-to-end. -end, I'd probably say the most physically taxing league in the world in the amount of transitions and counterattacks that are had. That's just kind of the nature of the, of the beast, except for with Houston. You can see Sinclair down for a second. Mm, hate to see that. What a tremendous year Christine Sinclair is having as she's back on her feet, perhaps. The, the best of her storied career, at least in terms of her club soccer, leading the league in scoring six goals, three assists on the season. Trying to walk it off a bit. And then Mark Parsons talked this week about just what a tremendous example she sets. Sinclair, 35 years old, just turned 35 on Tuesday and is always the one working the hardest. I mean, is exactly what you would want a captain to be, in his words. And leading by example. Just to chime in what you were saying, Jen, I talked to Christine before the game, and she, she said that really this offseason is what propelled her to have this kind of year in terms of her fitness and had a full offseason, felt great coming into camp. And she says the numbers, her assists and goals are high this year, first and goals, tied for first and assists, but says sometimes that's just a little bit of luck, ball goes in versus hit the crossbar, I got the last touch versus somebody else scored. So, of course, as she normally is, very deflective and giving credit mm -hmm. to her teammates, but she came in ready to play and is having one of the best years of her career. So humble. She is incredibly humble. And I asked her, too, I'm like, what is going on? What is that secret, both on camera and off it? And she's like, I, I don't know. It's just working for me this year. <laughs> She's played every minute this season for Portland. Nagasato comes away with the ball outside of the foot touch. Back to Colaprigo now. Kerr hovering. Vasconcelo saw an opening. Sydney LaRue has been busy early in Orlando. This match kicking off about an hour before ours. LaRue's got a brace so far in this one. And here she is getting onto it. One of the most dangerous players in the air. <laughs> Many people thought she'd be the heir apparent when Abby Wambach retired to be that dominant force in the aerial battles. But a little bit of pregnancy kind of got in the way of that. And now she's back at full, four, at full strength. Maybe starting to hit her stride. I we saw she her is. score a couple in that incredibly explosive performance by Orlando here in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. Five goals scored in that one by Orlando. Kerr, Klingenberg battling. Kerr, the quick touch, but wide. That Orlando match, of course, you can find on Go90, the app, and go90.com. Excellent little through ball from Nagasato, holding on the ball long enough to draw Hubbley in, and Klingenberg only with the save and the covering run is able to put something on it, gets a little body on it, and I think just distracts Kerr enough. Kerr trying to bend it with the outside of her foot to get it around Eckerstrom. And and we go as Carpenter is pressuring Gilliland, but I love that replay because you could see she did knock that with the outside of her foot. And purposefully. Yes. Was really attempting to, but then she's getting a little push. 
from Klingerberg. And if you're trying to hit with the outside foot and you get a pu push, your mechanics and your body positioning is so wrong that that ball is going to get shanked. But I love the sophistication to even think about it in the high-pressured moment. Long throw, a weapon recently acquired with Ellie Carpenter and her signing, signed with this Portland team the day she turned 18, April 28th. So this just her sixth appearance of the season. It's interesting for Carpenter too, a, a bright young star in the international scene with Australia, but plays in the back. And Mark Parsons has put her back there at times, but is also experimenting with her a little further up the field as she is tonight. Mott's coming over to make things difficult and does her job well for Chicago. A little dance going on along the sideline over there. <laughs> Hubley and Mott. Hubley just trying to prevent Mott from getting past her. Completely surprised she gets called for it. I love that. <laughs> what? I didn't do anything. I just held her. What do you mean? Sorna Gorchevich has had to come pretty deep to get herself involved in this match several times in this first half for Portland. And she likes to do that. And you'll see Weber then take her place for Sinclair. Lots of interchange in that front four. Andresinha. Trying to find a little more favorable space within which to work. to think these two teams typically are two that you think of when it comes to the playoff race in NWSL. Top four teams make it to the postseason. Portland in fourth at the moment as all the matches started tonight. Chicago tied in points, but in fifth due to that head-to-head -head loss against the Thorns. Sornogorcevic certainly looked to be tripped and was. Give you a look at the table, and this was coming into tonight. I can tell you first place isn't going to change in terms of who's holding that spot. North Carolina Courage unbeatable so far this season. Seattle also a team to keep an eye on there in second. And Orlando, as we mentioned, in a draw at the moment with Sky Blue FC. Portland, Chicago right there straddling that line in terms of teams who will make it to the postseason. And we are just about halfway through this NWSL season. Klingenberg service is won by Kerr. That's good news. Bad news is she's not up there to try to counter for Chicago. Cola Prico. And then Nagasato is fouled, free kick coming the way of the Red Stars. You get the feeling we're going to see goals. Not necessarily a matter of if, but when. And so far between these two teams. Well done that time, yeah. Carpenter, but couldn't hang on to it. A lift of the head finds Kerr. Nagasato streaking through the middle as an option. The ball will dribble its way to Eckerstrom instead. Oh, just so far apart from one another, the longer the, the pass has to travel, the more time it has for everyone else to react. But all game long has been Kerr and Nagasato trying to connect with one another and trying to do it almost by themselves. It seems that connection has been growing. We've seen it. We saw it in person 
during that match against Orlando, which I know was not a favorable result in any way for the Chicago Red Stars team, losing it 5-2. to two. But those two goals were the current Nagasato connection. Just imagine if Morgan Bryan inserts herself into that midfield. You have a linking player who can then free up Nagasato and Kerr to do their thing, which is a little bit more offensive. Nagasato is naturally a forward, and she's been slowly moving back the older she's gotten. Leading goal scorer when she played in Germany for Potsdam. And remember, I mean, Morgan Bryan is a player who has just had so many injury troubles the last couple of years in particular. Played just two matches with Chicago a year ago after coming over in a trade from Houston. But this is a player who was the number one overall pick in this league in 2015. She was a two-time Mac Herman Trophy winner at the University of Virginia. One of only four players ever to win that award twice. And a member of the U.S. national team brought back into camp for these last two friendlies against China. Reminder, coming up on the Ford Halftime Show, Dallin will take a look at last year's NWSL scoring leader and the wonder from down under, Chicago Red Stars' own Sam Kerr. And Kate and I will break down this first half. That's Ford go further. Portland eventually having their passes broken up. Aaron Gilliland, such a warrior in that outside back position where she's been most of the time this season for Chicago. Sinclair, we saw her hobbled to get up a little earlier, but fighting through, she usually does. Mott's ready to turn and burn. And Hubley will slow the progress at least for a few moments. There's a Gilliland chant going on at Toyota Park right now, which I kind of love. Is that what that is? I, th I think it is. Well, she's, I wouldn't be surprised if Gilly is a fan favorite here. Always enjoy talking with her. And well, she points out, she's I'm usually a pretty hot mess, but it's just who I am. She oh, owns man. it. You do you. You <laughs> do you. Surprised she didn't have any of her bright Aussie sunscreen on that she likes to wear, even though it is a night game. Picked it up in all these crazy colors when she played the W League in the off season. Andresinha, give it back to the back line. Mengis trying to advance it for Portland. Klingenberg, hopeful ball for Sinclair. Cole Frico, plenty of options and time to pick out Mox, who's wanting it for Kerr, who makes a run and it's tripped. It's a penalty coming for Chicago. Sam Kerr runs so aggressively at the restraining line prior to the ball even coming to her. So she picks up full speed and Hubley, Le Hubley leaves her feet doing the last ditch ever before Sam can explode past her and does enough to impede the play and the referee gives her a penalty kick. I didn't see contact so much as more just preventing the forward movement. So Sam Kerr earning an opportunity for Yuki Nagasato to give this Red Stars team the lead. Nagasato saved by Eckerstrom, but the putback is good. 
Chicago on top. Not a good day for penalty kicks across the globe, is it? <laughs> well, here is what drew it. Hubley leaves her feet. Tangles a little bit in Pete's curse forward movement. Nagasato is the one that steps up at Ekestrup, stays tall, does not guess, gets a touch on the first one. But Nagasato continues her run. Ekestrup does a good job getting something on it. And I love that Klingenberg was also one of the first people to get to it. But Nagasato celebrating, rewarded for all her hard work. She has done a lot of selfless running this half not being rewarded but in the last waning minutes the set first half she was missed the pk but did not miss the opportunity off the rebound i think what were there four missed penalties in the in the men's world cup today i believe oh messy oh, oh. i know but nagasato i don't think she's going to feel too bad about that one for too long not when you get the goal a couple of seconds later. She was on her toes. Kelly Hubley, the offending party for Portland. And she getting the start in place of Midge Purse this evening. I get why you go down as a defender, right? As a last to effort. Oh, I'll get back to that in a second. The great opportunity off a set piece. They're going to bring all their numbers forward. Haran, Cernogorsevich, and Sinclair will be the targets. So we'll see if Portland can make something of this opportunity in the waning moments of this first half. Can hear Alyssa Nair getting everyone set in front of her. Klingenberg's ball. Headed out by Kerr. Klingenberg will try it again. Haran in the vicinity, backed off though, as it was going to be grabbed by Nair. Sertogorcevic, well, look what landed at her feet. A great opportunity, look at far post. Carpenter maybe a step or two late. And the first half whistle sounds with the Chicago Red Stars on top. Coming up next, it is the Ford Halftime Show. You will get a great look at Sam Kerr. It is Aussie night. She led the league in scoring a year ago and has been hot this season as well. Plus, Kate and I will look back on this first half. Our score, 1-0 Chicago. That is Ford. Go further.